Welcome back. Okay, we are on with a new project. No, I'm lying. We're back with a very, very stalled project, unfortunately. Yeah, the tracks gave me a nightmare, and this vehicle's packed away, but now it's out of the box, and we're going to continue this project and finish it. So what is it? It's basically the OT-130 flamethrower tank, which is based on the T-26. The T-26 was this Russian light tank used sort of early on in the war period, and it was based on the Vickers six-ton uh, export tank. So what's your impression of this vehicle? Let's be honest. It's not really that interesting, to be honest. It just hasn't got that clout of these big heavy hitters. And everybody thinks of T-34s, etc. But let's make the most of this kit. So as uh, usual, I've been trolling the internet. And uh, fortunately, I found these really interesting reference photographs. They are from the museum, the Kubinka museum outside of Moscow and uh, here is the OT-130 with a very interesting camouflage pattern so uh, let's have a look and learn a little bit more about this camouflage pattern okay the first thing you'll notice is the colors they're different to what we really think of in terms of Soviet AFVs which is typically your 6PO green and uh, this life color paint set, Soviet World War II Army, contains a variety of colors that we're going to explore. And I think they're going to provide the right colors for this particular model. Okay, we're looking at the uh, website now. Of course, it's on the internet. Here's where to find it. And immediately, here's many examples of Soviet AFVs in two-tone and three-tone camouflage. They're quite interesting examples. And this uh, really makes the options more varied for ourselves. It opens up a couple of possibilities. It's great to have reference like this. And of course, they're free. I recommend you check out this website. And of course, let's get on with our project. We are settled on the scheme. Now it's just a matter of finding out which paints we need out of the life color paint set. Okay, let's talk briefly about these life color paints. Not really popular for some reason. However, this box set, believe it or not, is eight or nine years old. I'm not too sure exactly, but it's a really old, old set. You'll notice straight away that the paints are inside larger bottles compared to the dropper bottles that we find with AK, Vallejo, and Ammo of MIG. Now, the paint itself is somewhat different as well, in that it actually seems to be always in a mixed state. The other paints, acrylic paints, tend to take a lot of agitation, you see separation. However, they are still true acrylic paints, in that they are water-based, and that they can be mixed with water. However, we will use the actual life color thinner why use a different type of thinner use the thinner that's designed for the paint we're going to need two paints and they are a 7k yellow green or green yellow for the light color and the other paint is the 4bo variant which is ua239 anyways that's a bit technical regardless of that we've got six colors within the paint set and we just need the two of them for this camouflage color now let's uh, get on with the painting and the preparation for painting. Well, this kit's been stored a long time and it is covered in dust, greasy fingerprints. Let's just wipe that off using one of these uh, alcohol wipes. They used to be called um, tack cloths for painters, but using these antiseptic wipes, exactly the same thing. Okay, let's make up a brown-black mixture using the Mr. Surfacer 
and leveling thinner. We're mixing approximately 70% of the brown to 30% of the black. This primer is going to serve two purposes. First of all, obviously a primer, we've got some different materials, including photo etch on the model. Also, we've got tracks that are pre-assembled and we need to get our shading in there. But also, this is going to be the underlying metallic base coat for chipping and wear effects. So really, we're going to solve three things in one application of primer. The reason I make up this custom mix is just to vary that black. Black doesn't look very realistic as metal and too much brown, too rusty. So let's go halfway in between those. Airbrushing this primer is very straightforward. The same method as always is used. Just apply thin layers, building up gradually. We're going to pay particular attention to those shaded, deep, dark areas. And that's really why we need the airbrush. With the dexterity and the movement of the airflow, we can get the paint deep into those crevices and those dark areas. For the hairspray technique, we're going to use, uh, yeah, hairspray. I haven't got anything else. And uh, let's go back to the good old days when we used to use hairspray. The brand isn't too important. They all work in the same manner. The leveling surfacer has been allowed to set for overnight or approximately 12 hours. Now we just mist this on. Uh, take the hairspray away from the model. Let it mist on. Do about two coats and let it dry off. As simple as that. The hairspray has been allowed to dry for just a matter of 10 or 15 minutes. Now we're able to apply the very first camouflage color. We're going to start off with the darker color, the 4BO variant. It's diluted one to one with the same thinner that's recommended for the paint, which of course is Mr. Color. The application by airbrush again is building up thin misty cat coats this is really the only way to apply acrylics in a manner that is going to be satisfactory if you apply thick coats of paint you're going to end up with runs you're going to end up with inconsistent coverage the key here really is just to control the airbrush and take your time this application even though it's a very small model took well over an hour because of this misting process so i go as you can see I'm going to one area, misting on the paint, move to another area, mist on the paint, return and build this up over three or four layers until we have the sufficient opacity to cover the vehicle. That first camouflage color has been allowed to dry for about 12 hours. So overnight, really. Now we come back and yes, we are applying a second layer of hairspray. This is going to be two layer hairspray chipping technique. So we're not going to only build up paint chips on the metallic effects, but also on this second application of camouflage color. Application of hairspray is exactly the same and it's allowed to dry for again, 15 or 20 minutes. For the masking, we're using something called Clever or Science Putty. Anyways, it's a child's toy. Yes, this is also sold under the Panzer Putty guys, however, at four or five times the cost. I encourage you to buy the much cheaper child's toy version. Regardless, the nature of this is somewhat similar to Silly Putty, but it hasn't got the same greasy type of residue. And it's able to melt into the details, which makes it really ideal masking solution for models.
with the masking completed, it's a time to apply the second color, which is this 7K light color. Again, the same procedure is repeated exactly the same way. We build up the coat slightly and we uh, build up the opacity over three or four layers. It's as simple as that. Once the paint is dry, the masking material can simply be removed. Let's have a look at the results of our work at this stage. We've got the camo pattern sort of following roughly the Kubinka reference photographs. The general shapes are there. It looks about right. The main thing is we've got a hard edge camouflage pattern and the shapes look pretty good. So let's move on to the next stage. In order to achieve the chipping we need just some simple tools a toothpick that's been sharpened some sharp pointed tweezers of course some brushes and also we're going to use a scalpel at one stage okay let's just talk about hairspray technique it's got its oranges that go back to phil stukanakasis that did that amazing model at euro militaire which was the gold medal winner and it became very, very popular and it was developed into many different things. However, is it being used a bit too much? In my opinion, yes. So I'm just going to caveat everything right now. We're doing an OT-130 flame tank. It was based on a T-26. It's very likely that the base color underneath the vehicle will have actually been a bronze green. And will it end up in this degraded estate? Who knows? unlikely to be honest from what we look at today we tend to see that vehicles don't really lose their paint as you would hope so however it does serve for good dramatic reference and also uh, remember let's go back to that telling a story in this case we're going to show a vehicle that's had a bit of wear and tear to it and this is one way to do achieve it the hairspray removal technique is just based on the hairspray being reactivated by water. It just dissolves the gelatin underneath the paint. Now, with the acrylic paints, the acrylic paint does tend to flake off in quite large chunks, and that's just the way it is. So we try and control our application as best we can. Let's try and work on one area at a time, dampen it, wet another area, come back to it, use your tools, just build up the effect gradually. In some areas, you will lose control of the effect. It's just the nature of it. Let's have a look at the result. Not too bad. It looks pretty good. It definitely looks like a worn vehicle and we can see that base metal underneath. We've also got the two-tone effect where we've got that yellow coat which has been worn away on top of the green. So it looks kind of good. What we're going to do now is some corrections and we're just going to use um, sponge technique to do that. So we'll take our original camouflage color and we'll do reverse chipping on some areas. That way we can take away the harsh effects of these really big chips and also it just creates another layer of effects for our model. Okay, so I mentioned at the start of the video, 
this model had to be built up uh, with the tracks totally glued onto the model. It was just the only way I could solve that problem. And uh, it's not that big a problem. It just means that painting can be a little bit more difficult. However, we're going to come on to that. This is the method that I use to paint the tracks. We're going to paint the tracks with acrylic paint. It's the best way to do this. It doesn't really matter on the brand. However, we want a deep, rusty type tone, a dark brown. We're going to use the paint itself, some water, and the magic ingredient is this acrylic paint flow aid from Liquitex. We mix in this sort of ratio, about four paint, two of the acrylic paint flow aid, and two water. And then we mix up that solution and take, check its consistency. In terms of application, it's just simply a case of trying to paint as accurately as possible. In all areas, you won't get it spot on. However, we're going to come on to that later on in our next video. This area is going to be heavily weathered. So don't worry too much if you've got rust color on rubber and rubber color on rust. It's best idea is just to get the rid of anything that looks wrong. In this case, we've got camouflage color on some areas of the track and we want to create that rusty sort of worn track appearance that is all we're trying to serve in this step the purpose of making that mixture with the flow improvement is just simply to get into these tracks as you can see they are made of many many little crevices and nooks so the flow aid really helps the paint flow into those detailed areas that's the reason we added it to this paint mixture. Now using the same brown mixture, we're gonna hand paint in some deeper chips onto the blacky brown metallic effects. So we're adding again, maybe the third or fourth layer now. And we're just mapping this on in certain areas, i.e. the exhaust, and in some areas, those rather large areas of paint removal. We're using a satin black paint now, and we're just gonna paint in some of the details. The road wheels, some of them are rubber, so we'll paint those out as best we can. We will not be able to get it perfect. However, that's not to worry about. As I said, the next video is gonna cover a lot of wear and tear in that area. So don't worry about your accuracy. All you're doing again is removing camouflage color that is in the wrong area, i.e. on rubber. It's as simple as that. Something to bear in mind with the hairspray technique is that hairspray is still remains underneath the model at this stage. So if you were to use acrylic weathering solutions, i.e. water-based ones, you have a good chance of reactivating that hairspray and chipping your model further when you did not intend to. So let's seal up the model now. We're gonna use out of the can semi-gloss Mr. Hobby Varnish. This will not react with the life color acrylics. Finally, we can snip off these rather crude pieces of sprue that I used to handle the model. And this is it. The model is finished at this first stage, which was about painting and hairspray. What are your thoughts on this, guys? Remember, my main point here was that this vehicle is unlikely to be chipped that much. And I'm going to make that statement as well. But maybe it looks good, maybe not. You guys be the judge. Okay, guys, and see you next week, friends. We will finish off this model with all further weathering techniques. And there's going to be something interesting again. We're going to do reverse pigments. I'm going to go into that later on. Anyways, enjoy your week, guys, and see you soon.